Okay, guys. Well, I am going to start recording. Um, happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. So um, we're just going to kind of jump on it. First off, find out if there's any questions, comments, charts you guys want to look at. And then as that 9 o'clock, the 9 o'clock Eastern time candle comes up, we're going to check to see what the close of the four-hour candle does. And in some cases, they may be ready for a trade. Obviously, U.S. had some major news, and I kind of avoid most U.S. pairs for non-farm payroll, although they are the most appealing pairs this week, according to my setups. They just look the best, although they did finally break through everything that we were looking at last night. So let's, let's see real quick. But are there any questions, comments, or specific charts you guys want to look at first and foremost? Hey, Jenny, I have a couple. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I'm trying to test out uh, that daily, uh, well, I've been testing out that daily dot strategy that uh, Eduardo uh, brought up a few classes ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking at the Euro JPY and the Euro Chef. And it's looking like it's a pretty good setup on both of those to take for a sell. Okay, can you refresh my memory? What are the rules of that particular, so, the way he was doing it that you want me to answer? So basically, he waits to two dots to appear, and after the second dot appears, he'll he'll take it for that the direction of that dot. On the daily. On the daily, yes. Yeah. So like, if he's on, I don't know if he's on tonight. He's been on faithfully quite a bit. So like, we did a little one on one. We did, we did quite a few actually, and we talked about like doing just one dot. The problem is, is we know that this can repaint. So everyone's worried about getting the. Late entry, again, we like the, the slower entry. I do because timing a top is just greedy and it's a great way to lose your money. So um, I don't know the specifics and the rules because he's adjusted them, I mean, decently over the last few months, but his accuracy is pretty good, as you know. So what yeah. are your questions? Like, or do I see that this is good? Well, I mean, I did the, uh, the top-down analysis as well, though. From the daily all the way down to the 15, the only time frame that's not uh, confluent is the four hour. But I know that's a pretty big time frame not to be confluent on because that's that normally how I trade is I, I follow the four hour. So I was trying to see the daily, I would assume the daily would trump the four hour, wouldn't it? Well, trump is a big word, not just the name of our president, but like it's a big word in terms of you can technically get pips on this little move on this move, right? So depending on what time frame you're trading, I don't think that there's some super exclusive, this is the only black and white way to do things. So the daily is more significant, of course it is. However, like you have to understand the pullback on a daily or even on the four hour, for instance, could be enormous. So this right here, the pullback could be, I mean, enough to buy a car, for example. And as this is a demo account, but, uh, you can see that this is a trade that I would take primarily because it matches all my rules, not necessarily the triple arrows in this case, but our daily dots broke the 50. We have four hour. We have our five and 13, which is our yellow arrow. My eight and 18 cross. ADX was super sweet. Currencies spread very wide. And on the four hour, that's pretty, that's nice when you see them really spread open like that sideways. You know, think of that symbol like the greater than or less than. When you see that, Okay, it's it's perfect. In hindsight, of course, it's always 2020, but this is choppy. You'll notice this is wide open. This is wide open. And when you track these wide open moves, you'll see the big, bigger moves on the chart too. So I see that this could sell. If this continues to break the 50, the, the zero line on the MACD, for example, I mean, how many pips can we get out of it? At least, wait, your guys' little zoom window is kind of in the way. But you can get 64 pips without even breaking the triple arrow system, right? But we also have this engulfing candle, this bullish engulfing candle that now outweighs, because this right here would be telling us, okay, our buy is confirmed. This is what we're looking for is a momentum push to the upside, which is fantastic. And then of course, we retested it by about 50%. It usually happens pretty consistently. We get another bullish candle, but then it stalls out. Perhaps a double top or a crown or whatever you guys see in your world of definitions, but now we have another engulfing candle. So the freshest engulfing candle, the freshest momentum candle is a bearish candle. It's a, it's a downward candle. So now we see the spring candle kind of coming up, testing hopefully 50% of it before it comes back down, right? 
so I see the possibility of a sell by how much? Eh, I mean, I can't, you know, promise that and nobody really can. But we can see that even on our triple arrow system, it's yes, it's against the four hour. And I don't like it going against the four hour triple arrows. I find it to be super risky. But you do have four hour and daily support, which is enough to get pips out of. So like if we were only going to the ADR low, strange how it's not on here. Let's see. But this is kind of real roading, so that could be a reversal signal. Either way, you're looking at a good couple of pips. Can we guarantee that? Absolutely not, but it looks like that's what it's doing. Now, if this candle closes, because we have 22 minutes left on this candle, we want to see if this next candle opens as a bearish candle or as, as a bullish candle. So if it's going up or down, we really want to see how this one closes. If it closes with the large wick to the top, then we're more likely to have that kind of push downward, which right now we're not seeing. We're seeing kind of a full body candle. And we do have a wick. So let's see how much more it pushes down to tell us, is this still gonna go down? And that's just like basic price action, super basic. And if I go to this, which doesn't have the arrows on it per se, but has my daily dots on there, same concept, you have tweezer bottoms, which is a reversal indicator by itself. So this would count as an indication. That counts as one of your rules. I mean, you should always have some kind of indication that says, hey, so you know, if, do you see this or this, this, then you want that to be one of your checklist. You also see that this is railroaded, how there's two flat bottoms right here, almost at the same spot. We call that a railroad bottom. Two wicks, uh, almost at the same spot, of the same size, we call that a tweezer bottom, or tweezer top in, this, in other cases. But looking at these indicators, it looks like our RSI might come up and kind of retest four drops, but if it breaks the 50, 55 area, we, we would want to wait. If this purple line, so our seller's line, does not successfully break over our zero line on the MACD, same concept, so you don't want to wait. So when you're trading the bigger time frames, all you really care about is that you're, you're literally talking about 15 to 30 minutes a couple of times a day, depending on what you can squeeze out of your schedule with your lifestyle. And that's all you would take. Because when that candle closes, we'll have a bigger story. And what was the other pair you said? Uh, the Euro Chef. It looks basically identical to the Euro JPY. Okay, so Euro's weak. Chef. Okay. Take a look. But is the four hour saying buy on the triple arrows for the four? Yeah, it is. Yep. I did the wrong one. It looks pretty comparable, yeah. But this one has a wick at the bottom. So the candles are still really different. And so again, right. so if the candle closed, I would have taken a cell. You guys can see that. I'm pretty sure I was a little off today because of my schedule being a little crazy, but I had a lot of fun. Uh, but either way, eh, will this guaranteeingly keep going down? No. But it doesn't matter because I'd be waiting for daily dots. So before I would count this as another sell, I'd want daily dots at least. If not, for sure, I'd want my four-hour dots saying that this was ready to buy. And right now, our purple and our yellow dots are saying we're selling. But it just depends on what kind of trader you want to be. That's more of a Stairmaster method when you're following the dots. Okay, It's more of a Stairmaster thing. And that tends to work for me primarily because it's trading with the trend. That's why I think it works for me. It's because I'm not okay. necessarily going against the trend. I'm yeah, I guess that's where, that's, guess that's where I get kind of tripped up sometimes because, you know, I understand the Stairmaster strategy. And, you know, if you do it based off the four hour, yeah, that does look more like it's setting up for a buy for the Stairmaster. But if you're looking at the daily, it looks like it's setting up for, it looks like it is a Stairmaster on the downside, you know? So that's, that's kind of good confused sometimes about which direction I should take it. Okay, so right now we're on a naked chart. This is what I wanted to show you guys tonight. Let's go to indicators. This should not be my naked chart, but it is. So 
I just have to change it on this broker. I kind of made this one my teaching one because then it keeps all my other stuff off of it. And like I can keep the templates pretty clean and I don't mess with it too much. But okay, so looking at a completely naked chart, right? 100% mm -hmm. naked. What is this market doing? It's going down. Going down. So I mean, technically, would that count as a break of the trend line? This will let me do it, silly butt. Because we can start it from way up here even. Yeah, it does look like a break. Definitely looks like a break. Looks like we broke that area. And now we're kind of retesting it. Very, very possible. I mean, that's not perfect. I'm not going to draw it to there. I'm going to keep it kind of true to form. And we can continue to draw these on multiple time frames. We, we broke the trend line, came back, kind of retested. But now we, if I draw another trend line with where price is going currently, we've officially already broken that trend line, right? Right. So this is just kind of super basic stuff. I mean, I know it's super scary for a lot of people, but it's really not hard. Just draw a line. One, two, run it through. So you need to have two touches for it to count as a valid trend. There's no perfect science between wicks and bodies. Just if you do it on the wicks, do it consistently on the wicks. If you do it on the bodies, do it consistently on the bodies. So having said that, like now we're in it, we're in this indecisive area. I mean, but I still see sellers have power. I mean, this is definitely a little controversial because again, this would count as a, a naked signal, if you will, a pure price action signal to say it's selling. Oh, to say it's reversing more accurately, I'm sorry. This, this right here, tweezer bottoms, railroad bottom. Many traders right here would be looking for the buys. So just keep that very naked. I mean, that's what we see. Okay. But what you were saying about the Stairmaster method and not knowing what to do, this is what I wanted to show you guys tonight. Is let's pretend we can't see the dots. Let's pretend that they disappeared or we repainted or we couldn't trust them. I'm on the four hour time frame. I need to put that watermark on here. I'm sorry, I did not yet. I will have it done this weekend. But I'm gonna zoom out so you guys have a slightly better picture. And you guys know that this tool doesn't give me a lot of options to draw smaller lines like TradingView does. But like we see with the fractals, we can see prices going down in the bigger picture, prices going down. This is a downtrending market, right? Anytime when you see price stall out, or make that flag kind of mentality. When price goes out to the top side, that's a seller's point. When price breaks a low, so let's say it makes this flat bottom right here, and it breaks that on this candle, that's another selling point. That's a seller's entry. And sometimes can you get super ugly choppy stuff? Absolutely. I mean, that's not going anywhere, unfortunately, as much as we'd love it to. But anytime, so if you literally draw a trend line, Wait for price to kind of pull back a little and then wick up when price breaks the point. You can get your later more confirmed entry or when price starts to turn around in the same direction of the trend. That's all you're really doing. And when we put triple arrows here, probably and here, probably. Okay. It's you're still just following what the actual price is doing. So you have your triple arrows. You took the signal or maybe you waited till here where you had your sellers dots. You took the signal. I'm sure at this point you would have had daily dots. So you would have waited before you sold again to here, to where you have another set of support or until we broke this low. So again, I'm assuming there would be daily dots here. I can't confirm that because I can't see them. Price stopped at this point and turned around. So now you have two choices. You can wait for the daily dots or the four hour dots to sell it again in the same direction as the triple arrows, or you can wait until it breaks this point and sell it from there. But either way, you're going in the same direction as the trend, same direction as the triple arrow, and you're just continually selling down until you have enough confirmation to start buying. So just so you guys know, like that's super simple. I'm sure it might look a little more complex than it is, but it's really, really easy. Promise. Hey, Jenny, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm new to the group. I just uh, joined the group July 26th last week. And today I started a demo. And so I was on the AUD, uh, CAD, CAD. And okay. um, I was on the, I think it was the H1 or H4. And so what happened was um, I had a buy. So I was triple arrows at the bottom. 
and I put my stop loss. I'm following the Stairmaster um, strategy. So I'll put the um, stop loss, I think, below the big arrow. And so for my TP, I think I raised it too high because I was seeing my numbers like fluctuate. And then when I checked my uh, chart, it just, it's like I lost profit. So can you explain to me how far I should go up with my, with my TP? So you bought, well, you had the big arrow. You said you were on the four hour chart, right? Um, it was the four, I believe it was the four. Yes. No, 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 H1, H1. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's go to that then. So in short, your your TP is totally up to you. Your TP can be, depending on what time frame you're using. I also highly recommend you use this bar alert indicator, which is in the group. Um, it will tell you what the average trading range is for this pair or what the average daily range is to be more politically correct. So this pair on average only moves about 40 to 50 pips a day, right? Okay. So for me, trying to have a 500 pip take profit on this pair going on like the 30 minute and the one hour chart is probably not super reasonable, right? It's too high of a goal. It's too, not to say it's not possible. Some pairs can just out of nowhere drop for the next month and you could technically get it. But if we're talking about a reasonable pip goal, the things you want to keep in mind are risk to reward ratio. So for instance, if you got in here, okay, when you have your, your triple arrows, you see it, you're confident, and you're on the one hour chart, you took the trade, you were in profit, only 15 pips. But if your stop loss is 30 pips, you don't wanna have a 30, 38 pip stop loss and a 20 pip take profit. So that's a really bad risk to reward. You want how much you're getting out of the trade to be equal to or greater than whatever you're risking in the trade. Okay. Um, and that's okay. about 25 to 30 pips. I prefer, like, if I was using the one hour chart, I like going for half of the average daily range. Not that you can't get more because you can, but to learn consistency, to learn trade management, money management, and to start seeing success to like to the point where, like, maybe you came home from work or you woke up the next day and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, my account just doubled. And then, like, next week you will open it up and you made 50 bucks. Like to give you that confidence, I mean, you, we can make this much larger. I can teach you how to stack trades. I can teach you a lot of things. But for beginners, like I don't know how long you've been trading before, super easy. I would say start with a smaller number of pips. As, as long as it's not like super, if this is 20 pips and your stop loss is 40 pips, that trade is no longer a desirable trade because now your risk reward is offset and you would wait. You would pick a different pair or you'd wait for a pullback. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Hey, Irving, this one right here looks like a double bottom, but the euro pairs aren't quite a double bottom until it reaches the bottom. So once it reaches the bottom, it can be a double bottom and then it would be a buy. But for now, it's still, those pairs are like up here. So. Hey, Jenny, um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Hi, this is Ian, by the way. Happy birthday again. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Um, the this uh, that that one week ADR for the, the average daily range. You said that's in the group. What what is it? What is it called? Where can I find it? You can find it in the super easy notification channel, and it's called Bar Alert. Bar Alert. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. You are welcome. It's just the basic settings. Sometimes you have to skew with the numbers, so there's less of a spacing between here and here. And you can take off that whole show pips thing because I don't like the way it works. But either way, this will give you the average daily range, weekly range, and 12 weekly range for whatever pair you're trading. So it's really beneficial to know like the GBP pairs, for instance, some of their ADRs just went up by over 30%. So we're going to be looking for some consolidation at some point soon because nothing just goes up or down like that without having to retrace or consolidate. So, yeah. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, next question. Anybody at all? Yes, I do have a question. Why was the market kind of um, kind of crazy this week? I was seeing some, um, I saw Uncle, Uncle P uh, make a YouTube video about it, saying it was like a bad week to trade. Like what was just so different about this week? 
Okay, so that's a really good question. A lot of traders don't take literally any trades. Like they won't even take CAD JPY during non-farm payroll. So non-farm payroll is the biggest news day of the entire month, supposedly. It fluctuates the markets the most. But if you're asking me, this one event isn't nearly as impactful as the many events that seem to happen and follow this whole week. So for instance, this entire week has so much just drama, I'm gonna use that word, political nonsense going on that the US dollar is doing crazy things that aren't typical. Now, like you saw with his trade, uh, he did super well with the US 30, and most people, especially experienced traders, can do super well on NFP week. However, you're gonna do really well for three weeks, and then on one of those weeks, you're gonna do so, so, so bad that you're gonna blow you know, years worth of progress level bad. So in my case, I kind of stay away from most USD pairs during NFP week, but I'll still trade. But just so you know, when this happens, this one news event on Friday morning, every pair, so even like the Japanese yen, the Canadian dollar, whatever else, every single pair in the market can like fluctuate by an insane amount of pips, like an unheard of insane amount of pips. Does it happen every time? It absolutely does not. But does it happen enough times to make you say, hey, I'm not willing to risk my fortune or my future? That's the whole point. So, and you can look up what that stands for. It's some political, it's it's an economic report essentially, but I don't, I still think it's all just market play by the big banks if you're asking me. But needless to say, it's massively impactful. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And I feel like the US dollar just does crazy things all week long. So I feel like the US dollar kind of just does weird things like this, okay? So it, we made a lower low um, on the US, on USD, and now it appears as though we're gonna continue to drop some more, even above and beyond that. And I'm sure it's only because it's US, it's NFP week, but it needs to quit tripping and figure out what it wants to do, because a lot of people have just got this all over the place. So this one's looking like a massive, beautiful, it comes back and touches down here. Well, it already officially touched. So now we have a huge, huge, huge M formation. I mean, that's clear as day. If it breaks this, we'd be looking for a sell. If it doesn't, we're looking for a strong buy, a very strong buy. But again, I wouldn't even take this trade until after the, so I would take it after the NFP event on Friday morning and then just hold it. But for now, I'm not taking that trade until something tells me I would desperately need to, and it has to be after NFP. Only because I've done I've done killer well, like super killer well during NFP week before. But again, once you do that well, you start to trade a little differently mentally and emotionally. And then the next week when you trade like that during NFP week because you think you've learned it all and you think you're really smart now, well, they take your entire account and they don't care a little bit. So. I mean, it just it kind of works that way. So, yes, ma'am. Next question. I'm gonna start clicking through some of these pairs now. Just so you guys know what I see. Like I said on you on USD, there's a good chance this will set up for a buy next week. I mean, if it breaks this point, we're gonna get a nice retest, probably somewhere around this area. So it'll look like it's gonna be a buy. But if it breaks this, then we're looking for the retest, not to, to permanently buy, but to resell. Just so you guys know, that's the difference in trading with the trend and counter trend trading. It will definitely make or break your bank when you learn that. So, and somebody else had messaged me. I don't know if he's on tonight, but uh, he was messaging me about the swap fees. And you guys have talked about different brokers. At this point, I have four brokers that I'm working with. And I'm working on getting the information for the fourth one. But the thing about brokers that have no, no swap fees, what, yes, the spread is higher and the spread is scary. But what you might want to consider is the spread is something you pay one time. So I enter here, I pay that one time, and then I hold this for the entire three weeks. Okay, I don't pay any commissions, I don't pay any fees, I don't pay any swap fees. And the spread is higher, so it's like literally, I don't know, maybe two to four times higher than other brokers. But the thing about swap fees is you'll pay a lower spread here when you enter 
and then this day and this day and this day and this day and this day you have commissions, you have swap fees, and then Wednesday it's three times the swap fee. You'll pay more fees, more fees Wednesday, it's three times the swap fee. You'll pay more fees and blah, 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 all the way up to here. So when you come out in the wash of a swing trade system, having a no swap fee broker can literally be monumentally beneficial. I mean, just monumentally beneficial, just so you guys know. Huge difference, particularly for swing trading. It is not even a tiny bit effective for scalping because the spread is simply too high. You can't hit your pip quick enough and cover your spread. But for swing trading, it's just something to keep in mind. So, any other questions? Hey, y'all got on early. What time y'all get on? What time y'all starting? <laughs> hey, Brian or Mike, how's it going? Mike, uh, what time? What time did y'all start the call? I, I started at eight thirty because I'm in the Eastern Time Zone now, and I think it's a better time to start. But oh, I've messaged you guys in the group. I promise I didn't like not tell you. I was sitting here waiting for eight o'clock <laughs> to get on. Y'all already going. <laughs> it's okay. You're totally fine. I think I want to keep it at this time, guys. Uh, at least okay, for now. What, I miss? what did you miss? We're just talking about <laughs> pairs. We talked about Euro JPY, and that's it. And Euro NZ, Euro Chef. We're kind of waiting to see if those are going to sell when this candle starts to close here in three minutes. See what the price is going to do. Um, did, did anybody ask about gold? No, not yet. Uh, could you look what at you gold and tell me? Are you trying to buy it? Uh, actually, I was in it for a buy, but then it broke that resistance, that daily and that four hour. That shocked the world. It did. Well, guys, we know that gold has been trending up for like a long time. So yeah, when it broke this, it broke hard. It broke really hard. This was definitely selling. And now we have officially broke that resistance. I'm going to expect a pullback and we're expecting this to drop. Granted, it's NFP week, so I'm not particularly and personally going to be playing with this because anything can happen with this whole NFP announcement. It could go super in our favor. But either way, you could retrace maybe 100 pips, maybe more, before it drops hard. Yeah. So, NFP week happens the first Friday of every month. But that's again, only for USD pairs. So I'm not like a 20 year veteran. I'm, I'm not at that level to be transparent, but I will tell you most pairs are reasonably safe to trade during NFP week. You're not gonna do your 30% level risk during NFP week. You're not gonna do like, for instance, the million dollar challenge, you're gonna really avoid any USD pairs at all or any high risk trades at all. You wanna only be in the direction of the trend. But you can technically still trade, but if you were asking my advice, I would stay away from any U.S. dollar pair for the week of NFP. Only because what typically happens is it, it either goes strong in the trend, and again, we're anti-trend traders, we're counter-trend traders, we're pullback traders, or B, it pulls back and then technically we miss the move anyways. So that's just kind of what I see personally. I mean, because it's NFP week, this could totally switch. Well, even that is gold. Gold is crazy anyways. This could totally drop down. If it breaks this, it's coming to the ADR low. It'll come right here quick. So you have, you already have a 100 pip drop, give or take. The, the odds are coming, it's coming, are pretty high. But we do need a pullback. We need a nice safe pullback. And we officially just started a new candle. So we'll see. Wait a minute. Wow, is this the brand new one? You're welcome. Is this the brand new one? That's not the brand new candle, right, guys? No. Hmm, come on. No, but you should be looking for sellers. We're officially in a seller market. Is somebody's computer like going crazy? Whose computer is that? It's not even mine, honestly. Brian. Hey, Brian. Guess what? 
Yeah. Hey, Jenny, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, good. I'm good. But guess your computer is like singing us a song right now. Hey, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I usually have it on mute. <laughs> Fine. Did you have a question for me? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, on that US 30, I done kind of fell in love with that now. Um, uh -oh. Is your account big enough to hold that, though? Uh, I, I'm just looking at I'm, I'm practicing with it on a demo. I haven't put no real money in it yet. Okay. I'm just, oh, I'm questioning, um, say, okay, today it had a major drop. And I'm wondering, right, with a, um, um, a trade of 0 0.01 and then a trade of 0 0.1. I'm wondering if you look at it and um, measure your pips on that, can you tell me the amount, how much that, that would be? Um, okay, so that is a very, very broad question. And you're gonna learn this about trading. Most Forex pairs are pretty standard. They're across the board. And they'll tell you what the pet value of a pip is. But my first question is what broker are you on? Okay, I'm on AAFX. Okay, so on this broker, 0.01, is, so this is AFX, this is literally their broker. So to give you an idea, let's, I'm gonna go to a smaller time frame just cause it's gonna make it easier. When this says 25,000, that means the average daily range for this pair is 20, it's 2,525. Well, hold on, it's 250, I said that wrong. I know I said that wrong. But here's the deal. When you see this move, okay, this right here is worth like, on a 0 0.01, oh, you're gonna make me do the math, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it depends on the broker. So on like Coinex, for example, a 0 0.01, oh, sorry, a standard, a 1.0, and that's the one I usually trade Coinex. I trade with that broker for Coinex because I like the way they calculate pips. So okay. having said that, uh, I might be a little off on this information, so forgive me if I'm wrong, don't take it as law. But okay. for this broker, 0 0.01, is still technically 10 cents, but you're getting the whole value of each one of these pips. So this right here, when it says 2,525, then for this broker, it's actually 2,525. But like on a different broker, it would still give you these numbers on the side. So for instance, like Hugo's Way or Coinex, oh, sorry, for Coinex, it gives you totally different numbers actually, because they actually count it differently. But for instance, with Hugo's Way, this number is gonna say 25, 25 and then it's actually a 252 pips per day kind of scenario for coinex that's what it is so for coinex the average daily range is 252 pips but they do it differently so i don't want to be wrong when i answer you and maybe somebody else who actively trades us 30 on afx i don't but because listen this is a high spread your your spread for this is 44 pips right just so you know so you're starting $4 in the negative if you're doing a 0 0.01, well, $4.40 plus whatever, right? So that's where you're starting every time you do a 0 0.01. You're gonna want, even at the 2001 leverage account, you're gonna want at least $200 in that account and, you, and your accuracy had better be pretty top notch because one pullback, just to give you an idea, even with the high leverage account, let's say you got in here, if we have that kind of flat bottom, something that I would teach, Price broke on that candle. I'll try to make it a little bigger so your eyes can see it. Hopefully, a little bit of grace. So we got that kind of flat bottom. We got this bearish kind of a big candle, breakout candle. So let's say you got in here. Well, you were technically right. And this would make you a lot of money, a very happy man. But let's say you didn't close it because you were silly and wanted to see what the market was gonna do. This could also blow your account. And this isn't even like a huge move as you saw just to see what that looks like in, in here. The same principle, you got in here, 0 0.01, $200 account. If you didn't close it and be a happy man, your account was probably blown by here. Your $200 account was blown by about here. Just gone instantly. You can't even withhold this pullback because it's just too big of a pullback. And then of course it dropped by an insane amount of pips, right? Insane. Okay. Can I add to it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one very important thing I realized what US 30 is, 
you got to check with your broker's contract size. So like I was trading it with uh, FX Choice, mm -hmm. which is a contract size of 10. And when I switched and added an account with Hugo's Way, Hugo's Way is contract size of 100. And so that changes everything by a tenfold. So that's very important with US 30. That's what I'm saying, guys. I would love to answer some of your questions, but since I don't know all your brokers, I, I don't want to give you misinformation, especially on a commodity that changes well, more accurately an indice that can, it's, it's a beautiful instrument, truthfully it is. But if you're going to play with it, please play with it on the 15 and the five minute charts, which I don't recommend for almost any pair. But for this, I do, because you cannot be wrong and you cannot have a huge stop loss on this. Oh, my internet's kind of slow. But you guys can see, so this would be close to like the fifth flip flop method. Price broke the 50, and you're going to take that trade. You're going to, but you want to get out. You want to protect your profits because you are better off with a couple cents than you are losing $200. Always, always, always. Because look, you can get back in, you can get back in, and if you miss it, you miss it. But this one wick can blow your $200 account, depending on which broker, what your leverage is set at, and a hundred other factors. But this one wick, one time. I mean, how big is that demo account you're playing with, Brian? Are you there? Well, either way, it's an awesome thing, but it's kind of dangerous. So just be mindful of that and make sure your accuracy is really high before you trade live money because it's addicting when you can accidentally just go make a couple thousand pips just playing. It's, it's definitely, it's fun. So I'm going back to the four hour charts. I said what I would do in terms of odd USD. Right now there's no move because of the news, but now we're on odd CAD. We made a lower low and now we finally have daily dots and we officially have two. So if you guys remember, I'm not going to ever take a, a trade off of two on the four hour. I would wait till New York, which would equal about four, four daily dots, or I want that, that the next day to actually close for me to take that as a buy. You're welcome, Simon. Um, yes, Irving, I can. I can, absolutely. But just so you guys know what I see. So we've got our initial arrow. We've got this nice W forming. And could this rocket up? Absolutely, it can. But odd is still pretty weak in comparison to CAD. So we're not looking for any super strong buys because odd is not super strong at this point. Even this engulfing kind of momentum candle, it, it's already been kind of replaced and, and turned back around. So we've already hit the same spot, which now avoids this. So we're kind of just in no man's land to figure out what comes next. I'm gonna keep going. And this is all I do a couple times a day. My brother was laughing at me. He goes, oh, your life is so hard, huh? You worked for a few minutes, you took a walk, went to the water, jumped in the pool got a massage, <laughs> like, yeah, it was that kind of day. But in all fairness, it's my birthday, so that's okay. That is okay. Jenny. Yes, ma'am. Hey, um, happy birthday, by the way. Um, so on the, the daily dots, you said you want at least four dots to show up. Yeah, so if like you, I know you're scheduling your central time. So for instance, like I'm not gonna trust this at two dots. I like the tweezer bottoms here. And I like how it railroaded. Um, but I'm gonna wait till this becomes solid because keep in mind one dot can disappear. So on the daily time frame, we actually only have one dot. Right? So when you see it on the four hour, then that's that's actually a full day maybe even seven, depending on that last one that comes in funky. So for me to trust this on that first dot, I'm gonna want it to have survived London, for example, and then see if we're still getting the same confirmations as of New York. Not to mention, like right now, we are still seeing sell. We're not seeing buy yet. We're not seeing buy yet. Our MACD is super, it's kind of consolidating down here, but there's no volume either. ADX is not a buy. So this is simply not ready. It doesn't matter what anything else says. Like on this one, we have a triple arrow, but it's not ready yet. 
our MACD says no, our, our currency says no, and our ADX says no. And that's without checking any of their time frames. Like, could you imagine how easy trading would be if you just clicked through just one time frame a couple of times a day, you actually trusted your analysis and you let that trade be, you either had to take profit and walked away, or you had a runner, whatever your kind of personal scenario is, and that's it. But you have to have rules. So right now, I, I don't have enough rules. Even with that tweezer bottom and even with those railroads, I just don't have enough rules that are being met yet. So we'll see in the morning. We have two, which essentially okay. means this was four hours and this is one hour. So this is five hours worth of that daily. We're going to want to see if this actually sticks around. Still, still New York. Yep. Well, on this pair, some pairs are going to be lining up during Asian. So sometimes you're going to get this perfect setup only in Asian session. You're only going to get it during, you know, certain sessions. So right now, I'm sure it's because of NFP or whatever, but it just isn't super ready yet. If I had caught it here and I had my four-hour dots when I'm clicking through, and it was in the same direction as my, my yellow dots and my arrows, I'm going to take that trade as a Stairmaster. My Stairmaster is, my Stairmaster is like literally, it's almost 99% accurate. Because I, I take them in different accounts so I can see the accuracy. Like my Stairmaster mm -hmm. method is literally almost 99% accurate. Because it's so darn easy. Just checking the charts at this time. So at this time, these are saying buy. Uh, the triple arrow is saying sell. There was some controversy over what this said last night. I don't remember. I, I'm pretty sure this said sell, but I could be wrong. I definitely could be wrong. But either way. So you check it at this time, and then and then we look again. Not taking the trade. We're just looking at the charts, and then and looking at it in the morning. Whatever we had on our watch list for the New York session to see if it's ready or not. Yep, but like for instance, if this happened and was in the same direction, right? So let's take mm -hmm. this one as an example. I, I don't know how to give you a perfect example because this is real life. So one of these nights we're going to find something, one of them we're not, and it's just that simple, especially during Asian session. But right here we have our triple arrows, we have our daily dots, four hour. So if I sell this, that's 20 hundred. So that's New York afternoon. This is open of Asia. So at this time, right? And I had my dots, I would be willing to take this trade. This is a Stairmaster trade. Any of these dots, right? I might not like it after I saw this big push because I, I would probably feel like it's too late. But when I saw it break that, I'd wait for a pullback. It's like all of this is the same story. It's just learning how to read it in a different way. Same thing here. This will happen during any session. But I'm just saying I don't trust the, the yellow dots until I have either six of them on the four hour, which is actually seven, because that last dot won't come in until the seventh day, or to the seventh dot will be the second daily dot um, on the four hour, particularly. And so, but for the daily dot, I'm not going to trust it until I have more of them. More. Okay. And see Thank you. Welcome. You see how this is conflicting? Right yeah. Here. We're saying this is saying buy, but this is saying sell. And if I looked at some of the things, knowing that some of this can repaint, I wouldn't be so apprehensive. But either way, I mean, could we come back up and retest? Maybe. <clears throat> could we sell? Maybe. I mean, I suppose we will see. But either way, there's no current entry. Not for how I trade. And there's a billion ways to do it. It just doesn't match my way. That's all. Same thing with CHF, JPY. We're in this crazy consolidation period. I was looking at this anyways. This pair has just been doing this for like, I don't know, a year. Seriously. It really is a consolidating pair. Very, very much. But same concept, we have daily dots, same buy, same direction. I like the double bottom. I want to see this break the 50 with some power, maybe even that ADR high. I need my CHF to be much stronger than what it is right now. I need to, I just need confluence. And right now this is a mess. So our ADX is still saying no. 
our math D looks like it's going to reject the zero line. So this just isn't ready yet. Could we probably win with this trade? Triple arrows, a double bottom, well, kind of like a double bottom, not quite, because this did not come back down to the same level. I mean, could we take this? Absolutely. And probably win? Probably. Just based off of the triple arrow alone. Because this is a new triple arrow setup. We made a retest. We could take that all day long. But I want my oscillators to line up, and right now they don't. So if I bring that to my other chart, this is a pair I might keep an eye on because it's a non-USD pair. Let's see. And that's just keeping it super simple. You guys will find anywhere from three to, to 10 more if you have more time or you have a great eye or you have less, you know, extended like standards, I guess. Sorry, I'm waiting for this to load. It's kind of lacking today. Strange. The same concept, catching this breakout would have been great, but that was news-based, as you guys know. But you can set an alert or a sell stop, too. But you see how all this lined up perfectly? Perfectly. Those are the kind of trades we're looking for. We're not looking to take a trade that's not ready. It just is not smart. We know GBP popped off. If this kind of comes back and retests, and we have more indicators saying that this is ready to sell. I like this pair for a sell, finally. I'm thinking that it's going to start going down, although in all fairness, it's been going down forever, going up forever. So this was a nice pullback. Now it's just a matter of seeing what it's going to do from here. And that's kind of the big picture question because it's been going up forever. I think that even Irving was in this trade for like months and months and months, he said. It was a, this was a doozy like three months worth of just consolidating or waiting for it to drop. So now we're hoping that this is the drop. It very well could be. GBP definitely needs a reprieve, but we can't predict that. And our job is to not predict that. So if you didn't catch that top, some of us did by using the one hour or using different standards. We caught some of it. But if you're not at that point and you're looking for that pullback, and then you take it for the jump. But you want to make sure it definitely breaks some massive trend. So before you guys take this trade, you have everything else kind of looking like it's starting to line up. Just draw a trend line and say, okay, when it comes back and it breaks this, so it breaks this decently hard, maybe even retests, we're going to take it. At bare minimum, we might just go to the ADR low or to kind of retest the 50, as you guys can see, that's going to be in the same spot, which on this pair, you don't need very many pips at all. Another thing I'll point out is when you guys see this ADR literally jumped by 80 pips as opposed to its traditional 48. So when you know that kind of information, how do you say that? So when, when the ADR is really, really low for months on end, you're expecting an explosive move to come up. When an explosive move happens, you're expecting it to kind of mellow itself out and slow down a little bit. And it goes kind of both ways, just so you know. So when, when this pair was ranging for so long, you can almost predict that there is an impulse move coming up or down, you can't say, but it is coming and it's gonna be you know exponentially huge. So you guys know, just something for your information there. I'm going to go to the chat, which is not in there. Hey, Jay. Hey, how's it going? This is Elliot. How you doing? Fantastic. And yourself? Uh, I'm do doing great. Uh, I have a couple questions. Oh, also, happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate you. And congratulations on your move. <laughs> it's beautiful here. Is it working <laughs> out? I live in a very beautiful place, too. I'm in Southern California, so. Oh, I know so that's mom. beautiful. Anyway, you were saying that um, when you um, look at your dots, um, that you have a, uh, that with your confirmations, you, you have a very, very high um, success rate. Could you just speak about that again? Does that mean that when, when it's on a dot, you want to see that your uh, indicators are also telling you the same story? Yes. So for my, my daily dots, what I need to see 
this and I'm not going to take rules that have any less than this many confirmations. Um, and again, I, in all fairness, I did see something this morning or last night that I have never seen before using this. And this is like month, I don't know, three or three and a half of trading this way on one account specifically. So I try to be super accurate with the numbers. I'm relatively positive up until what I saw last night and this morning that once the yellow dot closes, the, the, the dot becomes permanent. I will say, so I'm gonna go to the same pair I was looking at, that this was news to me. This is not what happened. Um, there we go, sorry about that. I noticed that this actually did repaint or I'm pretty sure it did, I may be wrong, I'm totally possible. What is five thousand? Oh. Who was on here last night that talked about CAD CHF? Do you remember who it was? I think you got a pretty good one. Or somebody talking. Hold on. Well, yeah, got his own book. Anthony, I hear you. Okay, I unmuted. I unmuted everybody. So the gentleman that was just speaking, go ahead and come on up. I was going to make a different point, but that's okay. To answer your question, like super directly, it's not very hard. Um, I could be mistaken on something that I'm just now kind of figuring out. So excluding that bit of information and sticking to what I do know, when you have daily dots and it's closed, which means you have more than six on the four hour chart, because six daily dots on the four hour chart is supposedly stable. I'm pretty confident that it's pretty stable. Although I, I learned something today that I might be wrong in that. So again, keeping that out of the picture, six dots, preferably seven, because that's that day. And then you want everything else to line up. So if you want to trust this, that's what you're looking for is six daily dots or greater, which technically would be seven, right? So greater than six. You want your eight and 18 cross. You can do your slower entry of the break of the 50 or your fast, faster entry here. But the real key is if everything else lines up. So for example, you want your ADX to cross. You want your MACD to have a cross and, and, and or a break of the zero, the zero depending on if you're taking the faster or slower entry. You want your RSI below the 50. You can even use any version of a profit filter. You can also use a currency strength indicator or something along this line. There are many of them out there. Most of them are free. Anything along those lines. And when you take trades in that manner and you're going for half of the ADR, or a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. Or in my case, I stack them twice. Once as a runner, and that's only going for 3% at most. Most time it's 1% of my account. And then the other one is the bigger trade, depending on which account I'm trading that method in, is anywhere from 10 to 20% of, of my account. So that's the bigger entry. I definitely have very tight trailing stops on that. I always move my stop into profit if I'm available or I see it. Always, always, always without fail. So if I had taken this trade, for example, on the faster entry, and I was in profit already by give or take, let's just say 25 pips, I would have moved my stop loss into profit at some point, okay, before this had retraced. And then in most cases, in my case, I would have gotten back in here, same concept, I would have gotten knocked out because I always, always, always move my stop into profit. And I would have kept getting knocked out. But the thing is I would have made 20 pips and 10 pips and 20 pips until I finally got to this time, right? Which now has four hour support, daily dots, waiting for everything to line up. So this would say sell. This is below the zero. We're below the 50 on the RSI. We're good on the um, profit filter. And I can guarantee you we were good on the currency strength meter as well. I would have got 20 pips multiple times, maybe 10. But this is the time that would have made the hugest difference. So if you're, if you're kind of new to my class, you'll know that I trade a little bit differently. It doesn't make it the right way or the only way. It's just a way and it works for me. So a lot of people will hold this trade, this one trade. And let's just show you, this is um, 7 10. So this is July 10th and this is July 18th. So that's over a week, right? So that's over one calendar week, depending on how that played out in trading days. But needless to say, this is a week worth of activity 
And let's say you are trading with a high level of accuracy or something and you're doing 15% of your account. The problem is you can't afford to take another trade, nor have you made any money in this entire week because you're holding this movement, right? So the way I trade, I always protect my, my profits. If I'm in profit 20 or 30 pips, I move my stop loss up. I don't have a certain science behind it. That's kind of one of the fluid parts of my rules, although there's not many. But needless to say, I would have cashed out with profit even when it pulled back. I would not take this trade because it's against the daily dots. I would take this one. I would have cashed out with profits even when it pulled back. This is consolidating, would have been like all trippy. But again, here, I would have taken this trade and this is the one that would have hit my, would have actually hit my take profits, right? This would be the true winner. But the, the also point is I spent two weeks making a total of, let's just say I cashed out with only 10 pips. So 10 times two is 20, 10 times two is 20, right? I said I stack them two times. And then on this trade, let's say I got in kind of late or after the 50, this is 85 pips. So my first trade would have closed, give or take at that 40 or 50 pip mark, depending on, uh, one moment. Hey guys, sorry the kids are outside my office. Can you guys call your grandmother, she's calling. Whatever creature you're bringing to my office, for the love of God, what is it? Okay, okay get out of here, I love you. So there's an in-ground pool here, and the boys are catching all kinds of like, gizmos and gadgets. Uh, you guys don't even know. But anyways, so like I was saying, so I caught 20 pips, 20 pips, and then either way I got maybe 150 pips. Whereas most people had held this, was not able to take any other trades, and then finally caught their pips. Do you see the difference? Yeah, I do. So just, I think that if you guys can take that level of learning and kind of, uh, you should have super easy and the kids are sitting, and, and kind of apply it to yourself, apply it to who you are, then I promise like you'll be super successful because you'll learn trade management. So the daily dots are literally the same as the four hour dots guys. They're just set at daily and I find them to be mostly pretty effective other than this new question I have now. But here's the inputs. It just says daily. It says, please don't alert me. And it says daily. That's it. I didn't change anything. I don't have any fancy stuff. And for scalping, you can do something very similar with a one hour as well. One one. So you can make some one hour dots, for example. Which works Quick pretty question, well. Jeannie. Yes, ma'am. How do you add the um, ADR to the chart? Which one? The bar alert? Yes. So that is called the bar alert. And I will add it to the super easy group again tonight. Um, how do you add the indicators? Like you already have it and you just want to add it? I don't have the indicators either. Okay. Do you know how to add an indicator once you have it? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, then I'll just put it in the group. Otherwise, I was going to show you. So don't ever take anything offensive, guys. We do have some people who have literally never seen a chart or never traded, and they're joining the Super Easy family. So to the best of our ability, we have to find a way to kind of be patient and loving toward the people who don't know what bullish means and who've never like added an indicator. They don't know the first thing about MT4 and then the people who probably know way more than me. So it's just about finding that beautiful balance. That's it. Thank you. I'm one of those people. <laughs> it's okay. Me too. Say, so, well, at least you know how to add an indicator. So we're super blessed. Hey, Jenny. Hey, who's this? This is Ian. Hi, Ian. How's it going? Great. So I've added the ADR. Uh, what I what I don't have is where it says the. Uh, I mean, I, I only have where it says ADR high and ADR low up in orange. What I don't have where you have in green the one week ADR, four week, and twelve week. I don't. What do you know? What option that is? Um, it's not an option. It's a different indicator it's called bar alert. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It's called bar alert, and it's in the super easy forex group. Oh no no no! I I I I I already added the ADR to my to my indicators. Um, I found it, I found it in the group and I added it to my indicators. Uh, but I don't see where it says the one week, four week, and twelve. All all I when I when I put it in there, all I'm seeing is the ADR high and the ADR low in orange. Yes. Yes. Right, and that's because this is a different indicator than this is. That's this is okay. 
Yeah, it's different this way. So if I go oh. to my computer's list, for example, this is Bar Alert. Okay, 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 I got it. This is ADR, okay. I thought ADR and Bar Alert were the same thing. Okay, thank you very much. It's okay, and I'll add that again to the group. It's super easy, it's super self-explanatory. So I think we should be good there. I mean, I can show you too, just in case. Bar Alert, edit. Okay, so I don't want any more pop-ups. I don't, I, I do have it show me the spread because I like to be mindful of that. And I don't have it show posts primarily because if I have 10 entries, it only shows me the last most recent one, which kind of annoys me. So I don't do that. And then sometimes I mess with the spacing so it's not so super far apart. That's what these numbers are. And that's all of that. So. Yes, yes, sir. Super simple. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, let me check the chat one more time. Let's see. Um, you're welcome, Simon. Thank you, Irving. I super appreciate you. On the ADX, is there a level you prefer to see the volume? I definitely prefer to see it over 25. Bare minimum over 25. Over 20 shows me take a look. It shows me keep my eyes out and keep my mind kind of be mindful. Thank you, Stanley. I appreciate you. It just tells me to be mindful of the trade. Uh, and that's kind of important. But on the ADX, I want it to be above this 25. Above the 20 is good too, you'll see. But not just the volume. I want I want the seller's line, so the negative DI or the positive DI. I want them above the 25. And I know quite a few incredibly successful traders who only liked it in ADX. Like they like that and momentum. And I was kind of shocked at how important this one little thing is. So you guys know. If you're if you have ears to hear and you're willing to hear that and you're willing to study this and apply it, yeah, it's a pain in the butt because like you have a life and you look at it and it's unclear. It's unclear. You don't know really what it's doing. Then it looks like it's turning around. Plus these change directions in the lines themselves, everything does. Even your, your EMAs will technically change directions. But when you see prices moving down and you see it's all lining up, you see it's below the daily dots, you broke the 50, the eight is below the 18, which is below the 50. You've got something really powerful here. If you're willing to take it for a ride and just stay the course. So that's kind of the whole concept. So now as for our Euro odd trade, which we talked about last night, we were waiting to see what this candle did. We said it was going to come back up and retest it, probably touch the EDR high, which it literally did, which is kind of fantastic. Lots of brownie points for that one because it's like perfect. Hey, hey Jenny. Uh, yes, sir. Um, can you just back up just a little bit where you said um, it broke the 50 uh, right there? Yeah, wh about what time did that happen? Because I never, I look at my charts all the time. I've never actually looked at my chart and actually caught a move like that. I always catch it at the end or before. Okay, but that's 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 in your head. As, as loving and nice as possible. I thought the same thing, and it's because I spent my entire day looking at the charts. I, so I couldn't see anything because I was always looking. Like I couldn't see anything. And that's, I hope I'm being super gentle because I just want you to know, like if you honestly had checked these charts, for instance, this is the four hour chart, I'm looking at nothing else, right? And this is four o'clock, well, this is five o'clock your time, if you're Eastern, right? So this is super early. We probably were asleep still for this one, but we weren't asleep for this one. We were definitely awake. This is central time though. Okay, so your central time. I don't know how what time do you get up in the morning? Uh different times, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you caught this candle. Because this candle, the fifteen hundred candle was uh six AM mountain time. So this candle, you caught this candle. Well, wait a minute, I'm wrong. I think I am wrong. That's I've, six AM Pacific. Six AM Pacific, so come on, that's seven AM Central and eight. That can't be, guys. We're all wrong. I'm, I'm relearning the time zone, so bear with me. Wait a minute. So zero o'clock, 
Zero is uh, 2 p.m. my time, Pacific time. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, 1600 is 6 a.m. my time. 1200 is 2 a.m. Hang on, Mermanette. I'm asking, I'm reminding myself, you said wax paint today. So this is a four hour chart. Yes, it's a four hour chart. So this is 5 okay, p.m. my right time now. or Eastern time. So that's 4 p.m. Hey, we're talking to the lady. You probably should try to remember that. And uh, uh, I don't know what else is going on, but we can hear you talk about it in here, guys. So, you know. Um, we definitely don't want to eavesdrop on your conversation. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. Just let you know, like, we can totally hear you. So this is 5 p.m. So this is 1 p.m. This is 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern. So this is 8 a.m. Eastern. Oh, sorry. This is 8 a.m. Central. Mike, this is 8 a.m. Central time. You could have caught this candle. And th actually, there's a guy in the group. He has this indicator that kind of does the period separators according to whatever time you're checking the chart and you'll be able to see and that's actually how I got really good at trading that specific time is I, I just marked every 1500 candle on the one hour chart to see can I catch a move at this time yes or no because if I can't catch a move I need to reroute my schedule I need to figure something else out because I was frustrated and I was looking at my charts all day long but either way this is this happened in a time you could see and even if you caught this part you would have seen if you saw here it says bullish yes but it has a wick you would have saw that the eight and the 18 and the 50 are all the right way. Everything is lined up. So can you trust this to continue? That's the question you have to ask yourself. And that's gonna happen a thousand times. It happened a billion other times too, if we had taken this trade, definitely for sure here. And let's see, but does that make sense, Mike? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm at work, and they, uh, I got a little busy, I, I wasn't able to talk, but it's recorded, so I read back and play, I play it back. All right, cool, no problem. My, my, you guys are good. So, it's, it's not hard, guys. If you just look for this setup, literally, you're going to be accurate more often than not, and if you add this to, and only take arrows, the trays in the same direction as the arrows, your accuracy will improve you from, from there. And you can add or take away whatever you need as long as you're doing super confluence. And go back in time, see how this plays out. Just see, so. Jenny, this is Stanley. Hi, how's it going? Uh, it's, it's I, I'm like him, I'm staring at the charts and looking for opportunities and um, we're in the same time zone and you're mentioning look for certain candles you mentioned something the other day about uh nine five and one so you're in eastern time zone right yes hold on guys my my mom is saying hi on the love you Hello, mom. <laughs> okay okay so at nine your eastern time so it would be 9 p.m well let's start from the a.m it's 5 a.m 9 a.m 1 p.m., 5 p.m., 9 p.m., 1 a.m. So it's essentially 9, 5, and 1 all day long. I have to relearn the, the MT4 times for those candles because I definitely lost my place a little somehow in my brain moving across country, but th those are the times you're checking. So if you can either be the close your candle person, which means you're checking like 20 minutes prior to that time frame, or you can be like me, which is I'm checking – at that time frame and I want to see what the market's kind of doing to see how that candle closed I want to see how this candle closed I want to see this wick so if this wicked up like this I probably would have steered clear from here like I, I wouldn't have trusted it after just that alone although everything else was lining up that's why having a checklist of hey there's not enough criteria so just on this specific chart we have triple arrows 8 and 18 cross 4 hours and daily we have 8 uh, broke of the break of the 50 and beautiful retest that didn't even stick around so we have all these indicators and then of course we have our MACD which crossed over broke the zero currency strength which crossed over and is now widely spread above the 40 and the 60 we have a crossover of the ADX and momentum is going up so for instance in this trade even if that wick scared me to death and I had saw this right here now that you guys can see that candle I'm going to draw it a little further this way 
I know everything else lines up. So that means meets like literally 10 out of 11 of my rules. So I can take this trade safely. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's look over here. This is an active trade currently. The only thing it's really missing is a nice, I would wanna, well, I guess that's a retest. I want my daily dots to be a little more consistent than that. I, I don't like it when there's only two because they can easily disappear. Doesn't mean this might not be the move. So having said that, now let's count how many indicators we have. We don't have our yellow arrow yet, but we have one, two ar arrows, our four hour support because we can't count the daily yet. I don't count them if there's only two on the four hour. So that's one, two, three. We broke below the eight, but we haven't had an eight and 18 crossover yet. Haven't had a 50 crossover. EDX is, I love this spread, how it's widening right here. I love how momentum is kind of looking like it's getting ready to turn around. I love this kind of greater than or less than perfect spread of my currency strength indicator. And we have our initial crossover of our MACD. So this is getting ready to be your fast entry. I mean, I would probably miss that fast entry primarily because I sleep during London because I'm in the US, but I would probably wait till the pullback and this will have then, at some point this is gonna line up for me to take it. If this is accurate, at some point this is gonna line up for me to take it as an accurate trade. As of right now, it's not ready according to my standards. But I, I am trading much safer rather than, I don't catch the first part of the move, I just catch every move on the way down. I don't catch the beginning, I just catch every move the whole way there, the whole trip. That's all. You usually wait for the pullback. No, well, not necessarily. So if this happened to line up, okay. for instance, if I had, a, if this met enough of my rules, sorry guys, we're not going through too, too many pairs tonight, but this is good because you guys, this is what I wanted to do is help answer people's questions. Um, if this, for instance, if we saw this trade and this is what we're looking at right now, very difficult because hindsight's 2020. But let's see, I say we saw that on, I don't know, let's go with this candle. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line somewhere in and around there, okay? Right here. We see that our MACD crossed over and broke the 50, right? Mm -hmm. We see that our currency strength crossed over and is also spreading, it's staying across. We see the buyers are in control on the ADX, although it's not necessarily as high as I want it, but the volume is at least high. So that volume is kind of, it's a bigger key than, than the plus DI or minus DI them. So price, this is, these are the, the bulls, these are the bears. So if, if this is still in our favor, it's not as pretty or as advantageous as I'd want it to see, but it, this is a check mark on my list. And then of course we have triple arrows, so that's three more, daily and four hours, so that's two more. Crossover, that's one more. An engulfing candle. So this candle is larger than the previous 10, right? Literally, it's definitely larger than the previous one. To be an engulfing candle, you just need it to be bigger than the previous candle. So this is a momentum candle, an engulfing candle, power candle, whatever you want to call it. So now we have all those confirmations. So just to count them with you, depending on how you want to count them, you have to be consistent when you decide though. You could have as many as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 for the crossover, 11 for the momentum candle, right? So now you have 11 pieces of evidence that say, hey, this is buying. It hasn't broke your 50 yet, which makes you a little nervous. But again, this is the four hour time frame, so. Waiting on that 50 can sometimes be a little hard. Mm -hmm. But at so far, we have 11 pieces of evidence, right? Yes. Okay. And now we also have one touch, two touches. So that's a trend line. It's a valid trend line. And we broke that. So now we have 12 pieces of, of evidence. We haven't broke the 50, and that's scary. Definitely not what we like to see. It's hard to make decisions and then trust them. But just on this one spot alone, we have give or take 12 pieces of evidence to say this is going in our favor. So if I had saw this trade, I would take it. And if I, if I saw it even up here with this ugly wick, 
and then I counted out my confirmations to say, okay, you know, because our eyes and our emotions, they, that's what I learned most from working with Pat. That's one of the reasons I just, I love this group of people is they're really good people for the most part, like mo way more good than bad. And that's beautiful. But what I learned from Pat specifically was that whole emotional piece, because once you have too much knowledge, then you have too much, you know, fluff floating around your head and too many reasons to take a trade and too many reasons not to take a trade. Right. Right. And you're so confused. You don't know what to think. You're like, well, this says buy, but this says sell. And if I go to the 15 minute, but the five minute says this and you know, those one hour dots, but Hey, the RSI and the, you know, this one guy said, plus I got the signal on my telegram and they said that, you know, it's definitely selling. So I don't know what to do. Right. Having a checklist of rules that say, Hey, X amount of X amount of the things I use all say buy. So take the trade. I'm going to take the trade as long as my stop loss is not too large. So can I get a one to one risk to reward ratio if I had taken it right there where that line is? Absolutely. Guys, my MT4, I probably need to reboot my computer. No. <laughs> what did you do, silly? I know someone knows how to undo this. Hold on. Isn't it great? See those uh, four little um, windows by the uh, zoom and zoom out uh, magnifying glass? Wait, these ones. Right there, yeah. I was like, no. Who is this, my MT4 expert? Well, wow, look at all this nonsense. What pair are we on? <laughs> oh, you're odd. Okay, maximize. Thank you. For your goodness. Told you guys, I don't know everything. Okay, so if I had taken this trade, if I could just trust myself to take this trade, could I have done a one to one risk to reward ratio? So that's 80 pips. That means my, my take profit needs to be 80 pips or greater. And I need to be okay with that. So my, my first take profit on the one that's not a runner needs to be about 80 pips, one to one at bare minimum. And depending on the pair and some other factors, I do have a few calculations I'm using to decide how many. My best and most accurate calculation is half of the ADR. But the last final piece of if I'm gonna take this trade is if it's gonna be worth it risk to reward wise. That's gonna be my final deciding factor. So once I go through all those steps to decide this is worth taking, now I have to do the math to tell myself, okay, what's the percentage I'm gonna risk? What's the news? And what kind of profit am I looking at? So if the most I can get out of this pair is like maybe 50 pips, my stop loss has to be 90, then I did all that analysis to not take the trade. All of it. Does that make sense? Yes. How do I get that news uh, uh, indicator right there? Oh, I really got to take it off, guys. That's part of a previous company that I bought into at a lifetime okay. membership price. Okay. So I would love to like affiliate that stuff to you, but to be transparent, um, I bought into that company as a lifetime membership. Now it is very, very pricey per month, like 10 times more than most groups. Uh, it's just too expensive. Like considering most of the stuff they have isn't even that great. This is probably the best thing that they have. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I wouldn't suggest paying 200 bucks a month for it. I mean, there are other ones that are free on MT4 and there are free ones in the group too. They're not as good. I'm not going to fib, but they're good enough. I mean, yeah. Cause for a support team, most companies, I mean, I don't know. It seats their own, but either way, I'm going to go to the chat. We did not click through a whole, whole bunch of pairs. Dorian, thank you. Thank you, Irving. I appreciate you. And I already dropped the file on the notification channel. Thank you. Perfect. So probably a good idea for me to have like a, a written checklist because I'm stuck, right? It's kind of like. Yes. And I see this. So it's probably better for me to have a, like a written checklist that I can check off and say, go ahead and take the trade. Yes. Get out of that stuff, please. Well, that's what saved me. So I had started with the triple arrow system. I was having some decent success with the one hour. I made some decent money with the four hour. I was I was profitable, but only marginally. Like, so not enough to really make a difference. The biggest thing that made me say, okay, I know this works was, I don't know, I think it was, um, I don't remember what month it was, but 
I sat down and I said, okay, so I'm going to find my trades every Sunday or Monday, or I'm going to look for them every Friday. I'm going to write them down because numbers lie, computer screens hurt your eyes, and it's really hard to find accurate information. But I wrote down every pair that I traded on the one hour and the four hour chart. I wrote down if they hit my stop loss, if they went into profit by how much, if they kind of bounced around. So like if they kind of went against me by 30 pips and then plus 50, I needed to know that kind of information to know what kind of drawdown that my account could handle and what percentages to trade. But needless to say, I ended up with months and months of data. And then every so many weeks I would tweak it. And then I got currency strength indicator, which really was the biggest impact. And then I only started trading in the same direction as the four hour. Uh, that made a huge impact. And the daily dots, the daily dots and the four hour share master. When I'm only taking trades already in the direction of the trend, your accuracy is gonna be, think about it this way, on a super naked chart, okay, super naked. If you're only taking these cells, every cell, cell that kind of comes down, you only have two shots to lose, which is the one at the beginning of the trend and the one at the end of the trend. Everything else you take has to be right. Does that logic make sense? Yes. The problem with trying to count the end of the trend is, so trying to count where the reversal is and trading against the trend, essentially, you're trying to hope that this is a triple arrow, that this is gonna sell. You can be wrong here, 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 you can be wrong here. Do so that's like my logic. It may or may not help you, but when trading with the trend, you only have two chances that you're wrong, which is once at the beginning and once at the end. When trading against the trend, you only have two guarantees you're going to be right, and then the rest of it you could potentially be wrong. So it's the exact opposite, literally. And for me, that wasn't good enough odds. So, okay, thank you. You are welcome. Any other questions, comments, or pairs? I'm gonna click through a couple more, but I'm probably gonna hop off a little bit early. I guess that's not too early. It's been an hour and a half. So, not too. I ate a huge piece of cake, and I even took a walk, like a huge piece of ice cream cake, and that kind of sugar, it just like, I think it bogs your brain down. And don't get me wrong, it was delicious. Like, it was amazing. It was chocolate heaven. But I do think that kind of sugar kind of slows your brain down exponentially. <laughs> You were on a sugar high and you crashed. Um, oatmeal does the same thing. <laughs> really? Because it's, well, it's like one of those ice cream cakes with the hot fudge and the chocolate. and <laughs> Oh, it's deadly amazing. Oatmeal does the same thing. You yes. making me hungry. Ship me a piece. <laughs> <laughs> I thought oatmeal was good, you guys. I thought oatmeal was supposed to be good for you. I mean, I know it's carbs, but... It's good, but... Um... Because I still lift weights and they don't recommend that you eat the oatmeal because you'll just crash afterward. And that happened to me a lot. I don't doubt it. I'm not much of a nap person, but I feel like I could totally take a nap. I'm like, huh. And it feels like a sugar coma, you guys. Like, no joke. It's, it's yeah. crazy. When you don't eat that much sugar in general, and then you, like, pound back a piece of cake like that. Because I don't eat perfect and I have Starbucks or coffee, but I don't eat a lot of sugar. So I'm sure that just sent my whole body into like, like this is shorting out, you know, what is all this? <laughs> That's why you call it crack cake. Yeah, exactly. It is like a crack cake. Yeah, because I don't, I have a high metabolism and I have trouble sleeping anyway. So if I get anything in me that, uh, that is sugary, um, like supplements, I could be up for two days straight. And uh, when I was in college, I used to take this, uh, supplement that they would give soldiers in the military called modafinil and i was up uh, almost three days with that that sounds like some like crackhead stuff too but it's good stuff it helps you, know? you uh you know because i worked full time and i went to school full time so i needed something that uh would give me some energy so i could study hey put that in the group i need to get some of that now don't be putting that in the group. Pat will have a face. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, a lot of day traders. <laughs> if you have a member, if you have a family member in the military, just ask them about Modafinil, and they'll tell you. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I want some happiness. You guys talk about like seriously. Pat's best in like. So. Just, yeah, just get the double shot. Uh, <laughs> 
Starbucks. <laughs> Definitely watch. I'm gonna get this message from Bob. There's nothing about no. No, we were not. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Love is a good guy. Okay, so you see this, guys. I'm gonna look over a couple more. I just wanted to talk about JJ. We had a nice pullback before you guys go trying to buy forever and hold. Please, again, be mindful. We know that GN gave out some beautiful pips, but we are not in a buyer's market just yet. We are still in a seller's market. I just want you guys to be fully aware of that. So at least the people who attend my call are not the ones sending me a screenshot saying, Jenny, I just lost 10 grand. Um, I was doing so well and I grew it from 300, but now I'm out 10 grand. Cause I get those messages all the time. So there's a lot of people who have a lot of success and they're making tons of money, but then they make decisions like this because it looks awfully appealing. And yes, this was a lot of pips. This was pretty, this was nice but we don't have confirmation yet, right? Does anybody else see that? Please tell me to see that. Hey, Dark Vader, who's breathing? Okay. Who's Dark Vader? Anthony? You sound like Freddy I know, right? Thank you, I appreciate the happy birthdays. Thank you, Barbara, I read your message last night, it made me smile. I could help us get through London session. No, we're not trying to get through London session, you guys. Y'all need to sleep or schedule. You need to have brain power if you're going to be successful. Hey, Jenny, real quick. You you were looking at uh, GN. Was that correct? I'm on GN right now, and this is what I want to show you guys. Thursday's got a ton of news. So could this finally pop off in our direction? Like, I would consider putting a buy stop. Because if it does pop off hard, it's going to pop off hard. Thank you, Dorian. That was that was exactly my question. <laughs> you would put a buy stop right above the uh, four hour dots. Yes, I would. Okay, okay, that was my question. Let's see. Well, you guys have to understand how buy stops work. It's a late entry. That's not always fun. Okay, definitely a late entry. If somebody else's birthday is today, happy birthday. Just so you guys know, I don't know who it was, but happy birthday. That means we're birthday yeah. party. It's Antoinette. Thanks, Jenny. It's is your it, birthday today, too? Yeah, it's your birthday? Yeah. So you're a Leo, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy birthday. Let's see, he can sing, y'all. Huh? Not bad. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate you. Just well, a little bit. I, I do a little something in the choir, church choir. That's all. <laughs> awesome. Yes, well, happy birthday, girl. I hope you do something amazing and Go out and have a good time and don't eat so much cake. It makes your tummy hurt. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Lord knows I did. That was a big piece of cake. Okay, so about the GBP pairs. If I were to take this entry knowing that I'm going to bed, so I'm going to miss the one o'clock candle. Um, so that is the, we're missing a time. So that's the 8, 8 a.m. or 8 o'clock candle on MT4. The 8, 8 a.m., 8 o'clock, and then the 12 o'clock candle on MT4. I'm going to miss that one. But if the next one is popping off, which is very possible with all this news coming up, you have the option of doing a buy stop because if it does break out of here hard, it'll break out hard. Now, the, the trick would be you would do a pending order. So, for instance, if you did one here, you could easily get 50 safe pips. You do a 50 pip stop loss and a 50 pip take profit. It is kind of a breakout strategy. You could do a, a less safe one, but faster entry one here. Same concept, do like a 50 pip take profit. Or on this one, you could probably do a slightly, maybe 55 pip take profit, and then a slightly smaller stop loss. Um, and you can, you can make that decision, but just don't go buying and holding and then not manage the trade. So don't, don't buy this saying, this is finally this trend reversal that's gonna last you know, for the last four months, like this has went down, we're looking for the one that's gonna last for four months to go up. We don't do that until we have enough confirmation. So you may be able to take this as a buy when you get enough confirmations. As of right now, according to what's on our chart, GBP is stronger than NZD, but not by a whole bunch if you guys pay attention to the numbers. We do have our original crossover of the MACD, but we're not above the zero line yet. This is looking good and we're paying when you're already in the trade, you want to know when this starts pointing up. 
So when the seller line starts pointing up and you're buying, that's when you want to pay attention. If you're selling and the buyer line starts pointing up, that's when you pay attention. This one can kind of bounce around whenever it wants. So you see how this is kind of just bouncing around. No one cares if this is pointing down right here. You do care when this starts pointing up and you're in a sell. Just that one other tip in terms of the ADX. But guys, yeah, this right here, do a pending order or skip it until it's confirmed because there's already a boatload of news coming out tomorrow. Okay. Any other questions, comments you guys want me to answer tonight? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Yes. You uh, often talk about moving your stop loss into profit. Is that like break even? Um, is that, how do you do that? Just for the entry, would you enter in the price you enter in? Or were you uh, in profit? Okay, so let's pretend hindsight's a beautiful thing. Let's say I took this trade somewhere in here, okay? This is not a super large move. It's not one of those five-year drops, and it is against the trend, just for conversational purposes. But we have a confirmation, confirmation, kind of getting ready to break the zero line. And for whatever reason, this meant enough of my rules, so I took the trade somewhere on this candle, okay? So when I entered the trade, let's say I entered it here when it broke that previous resistance, this is my entry, okay? So price is moving along, and let's say I'm sleeping for this candle, I have no control over that, and the next morning I get my children to school and make breakfast, take a walk, get off my butt, right? Let's just pretend like I didn't see the chart at all, because that's real life, some of us like, more than me and some of us less than others, but of life and they actually walk away from their charts or we pretend to at least hopefully. So pretending we didn't see these candles at all, let's say I came to the candle, the chart when it was on this one right here. This, this candle. Well, when I'm in profit, I'm clearly in profit depending on spread because I only spring swing trade on no swap fee brokers, just so you guys are aware. I do not swing trade on swap pay brokers because those swap fees can take all your money away. So now I kind of zoomed in. So again, we said I, I entered in at the break of this resistance that counted as a checklist for me. So this meet, met enough of my criteria. I took this trade there and square and I won it. I was in the profit. Well, from where I entered to where price is at when I checked it at the close of this candle or wherever I caught this candle in all fairness, but this is 32 pips in profit, right? This, in all fairness, is a GBP pair. So this needs a lot more room to move. This is actually the fastest moving GBP pair, to be very honest. So it definitely needs a lot more room to move. But needless to say, I definitely still want to protect my profit. So in this case, knowing that I'm only up by 30 pips and the average daily range on this is like well over 100, I'm, I'm such a good caretaker. I'm a good nurturer. <laughs> of my little garden. So I'm literally going to take my little stop loss, drag and drop it, but I have to pretend because this is not that kind of unactive trade. So I'm gonna drag and drop it like to here. I'm only gonna keep a tiny amount of profits just in case it kind of wicks down. I, again, I'd rather close with two bucks okay, than lose 10,000. That's just my management. That's what keeps my accuracy high. It is not because I don't take bad trades. It's just because even when I do, I'm mostly protected, if that helps answer your question. But in this case, now my stop loss is in profit. It, it goes in my favor. But again, let's pretend I'm in Bora Bora. Let's pretend that I was literally on a yacht and it was a beautiful thing. I had no Wi-Fi. So I missed everything. I didn't get a chance to close in profit, whatever. When price comes back down here, I get closed out. I ended up getting about 12 whatever pips and I lost nothing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If I had to take profit in, I would be going for half of the average daily range or a one to one risk to reward ratio, depending on where I hit my, put my stop loss. So let's say I put my stop loss here. Sorry guys, it's being silly. See right here. Boom. So if I had stacked two entries like I typically do, my first entry would have hit the take profit. Okay, again, pretending like I did not see the chart at all any time during this like, I don't know, what is this, a whole week period. 
This one would have hit take profit. I'd be super happy when I got back from that yacht. This one, which would have been my runner, at least the profit was protected, so I lost nothing when it went against me and it turned out not to be the big move we wanted it to be. Does that help you understand the method or? Yes. And that's literally all I'm doing. I, I usually have a much better idea, but with this pair moving so much, I can't possibly protect 20 pips of it because this pair moves too much. 20 pips would probably be too much. It would knock me out. Well, you so, know, this, this is the pair that I've had the su most successful. Mastering this pair will pay you good. Yes, this is the one I've had my successes with. I that's got awesome. up one day and I was up about in demo about 700 bucks. Nice. What was your lot size? Uh, I think I did a, I think it was a, a 0 0.1. No way. <laughs> no, I think it was a 1.0. Sorry, 1.0. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think the market has moved that much in the last 10 years. I think it wasn't that. It was that a standard lot? You're good. But that's awesome. This pair moves a lot. And the value of it, uh, here, let's pull it up on a different chart now that we made a, I do know what I'm doing, close it right here. The value of this isn't so high where it's like super risky. So you'll see that it moves twice as much, but the value is half as high. Do you see that? So any US dollar pair, the, the, the price per pip is 10 bucks. That's how much you make per pip, per standard lot, so per, per 1.0. But on this one, how much you make is $7 per lot, just so you know. So getting those pips in a very safe way is a great way to be. Okay. It's fantastic. So let me check the chat. You are welcome. Any other pertinent? Go ahead. Hey, Jay, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, when you just did, when you did that, um, you have your first, so if you have your two entries, your stack trades, are you, are you, um, putting your stop loss and the profit on both of those, even on your first one that has take profit? So that's a really good You question. have it set for a take profit? Yeah, so the first one I have always set for a take profit, I also apply a trailing stop, and I manage that one the most. But on the second one that has only like one to three percent, I don't necessarily mind as much, but even on that one, I move the stop loss up. Yes, I do. Okay, so you do do it on both of them. Okay, I just wanted to double check because when I saw you explaining that, I wasn't sure if you were doing that on your take profit entry as well. If on both or of them. Take pro yeah, the one that you had set for take profit. Yeah, the point is just to be super protective. The point is, look, losses stink and we're going to have them. Like, we can't avoid them if we're being honest. But again, using these perfect examples, of I'd rather close out with a little bit and then get back in and take a huge loss and then chase a trade mad trying to rebalance my account. So I'd rather close with a tiny profit and get back in later. So same story, different day. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Up and, off and I'm gonna go kiss the kids and then say good night. And I super appreciate you all. I am wanted to say how amazing I felt um, just last night talking with you guys. We, um, dreaming with you guys and just wanting desperately to show you what's possible and it's been an awesome blessing to work with this little super easy family and to get to know each and every one of you and thank you for all the love you've shared on my birthday and it meant the world so i wanted to say thank you personally to each and every one of you thank you jenny you have thank a great you, day jenny. Thank, thank you jenny. Welcome, jenny. thank you very much jenny you have a great evening take care happy birthday again thank you jenny yes. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday to <laughs> <There it is. laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You're the best. I adore you. <laughs>